Hello, David McGregor here from Southside Uniting Church in Brisbane, Australia. Welcome to another Midweek Musing. And as we spend time with God and dispersed as we are with each other and with God's world, we acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians of the land in which we are. In my case, it's the Yagara and the Turbul people. Pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And I commit myself and I pray we commit ourselves to that journey and call to reconciliation, one with each other. And ultimately, one with each other, with God. Our prayers and our songs this our prayers and our songs this morning come from the Iona community. Let us pray. You, greater than all we can think of, smaller than all we can imagine. You, farther than the universe and beyond, nearer than the secret of our hearts. You, breath of being, before us and behind us. You, force of life, above us and beneath us. You, speaking in many human tongues, whispering in the depth of our souls. We come into your presence to praise you, because you are. And we are, through you and together, with you, now and forever. Amen. We continue in song and prayer. Come to me. Come to me, you who are weary, who are burdened. I will give you rest. For I am gentle, I will listen, and you will find rest for your souls.
come to me. Trust in me. Believe in me. Let's recap from last week. This is a two-week series looking at Celtic Christian spirituality, particularly through the lens of the Iona community, which gathers people in dispersed and unique together ways, people from across the world. I'm privileged with Dale to be among those. Last week, I shared that God made God's people for community. God's self is God in community. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God. One God in community. And we reflected on the centrality of community for Christians. I've got a big confession to make. I shared about communities that I've connected with and still connect to, not just the Iona community, but the Emmaus community, the Taze community, the Sojourners community, the, the church I grew up in, in Indrapilly. And I forgot something absolutely basic. You'll have to forgive me. I forgot to mention the community that you, certainly if you're a Southside Uniting person uh, engaging with this and myself are part of, our local church community. God calls us to be in community. And it's in that local church community, here and now, and I record this on the 18th of November, 2020. It's in that local church community that I see so many of the hallmarks I find in Celtic Christianity. Not all of these, but a good many. A passion for God's creation. A sense of closeness between the natural and the supernatural. An emphasis distinctly on the Trinity. Exploring new possibilities, grounded possibilities in worship. few boundaries between the sacred and the secular, an emphasis on family and a generous hospitality as part of everyday life. But you may well be asking, David, why the Iona community? Well, early on it was the real, and I mean real, the earthy, grounded prayers and liturgies that were becoming available to the wider world. I'm going back to the 1980s and 1990s here. It was the marvellous music coming from the pen of Iona community uh, writers like John Bell and the late Graham Moore. Songs, contemporary hymns and worship songs these days sung around the world. It is still is those, but from a connection, as I've shared with the community going back 
over 30 years. It's heightened by spending a week on multiple occasions and Dale being part of this too, my wife, as a guest on Iona itself with the Iona community. All of these in some way pointing to what any life of discipleship in Christ needs to be about. A discipleship that's committed, and I'll go through this quickly, to community, real community. To what the Iona community founder and countless others refer to as the common life. Common from communicas, meaning people. With the blend between work and worship, I'll come back to that later. To pilgrimage, to journeying, both physically and spiritually and missionally. To inclusion of all people, to welcome. To working ecumenically as well as interfaith. A commitment to peace and justice concerns. As I've already shared, to music and to earthy worship. And to a simplicity of Christian living. I'm attracted to that. Can I tick all the boxes that of those points I've just raised? No. But can any of us? Today, the Iona community is a place of pilgrimage from all over the world. The times that Dale and I have been on Iona, there have been people from every continent. Every continent. It's become a major centre for ecumenism, for social justice, for healing, for tranquility, for reconciliation and for the renewal of worship. It's amazing our times there as we've sat in the historic and ancient rebuilt uh, abbey the number of young people, older high school, university age, young adult, from different parts of the world. The spirit is alive. Here's another song. Sing along if you can. I'd like to reflect a bit more. Dal and I were booked in for a week, a community week on Iona, just over two months ago. We invited people from Southside and from the Presbytery to join us. A few actually decided to go and that was great. But like so many other things this year, COVID-19 put the big red line through that. A deep sigh. However, we do count our blessings and five years earlier, Dal and I took some study leave and we were blessed to spend time with the Iona community on Iona attending what was called a Viable Alternatives in Worship workshop. Not a Viable Alternatives to Worship, 
but viable alternatives in worship. The week-long workshop was led by the community's Wild Goose Resource Group. What a strange name, until you realise that the wild goose is the Celtic symbol for the Holy Spirit. I wrote a report to the Elkhorn Fellowship Trust, who kindly assisted with some of both Dale's and my costs. Here's an abridged version of what I wrote. And may you catch the wind of the Spirit, the creative hand of God, and the love of Jesus as I share. I pray these are more than words. I wrote, I'm privileged to have been with the Iona community on Iona previously, that being an enriching experience. That said, there was something incredibly profound, even deeper, about this time. Perhaps it was the superb, inspired, spirit-led leadership by the globally renowned John Bell, Graham Moore and Joe Love from the Wild Goose Resource Group. They kept on popping up everywhere, offering insight, encouragement, gentle and sometimes uh, provocative uh, thoughts in so many aspects of worship. Perhaps it was in the continued use of worship song, which was theologically deep theologically deep, yet lyrically and culturally accessible, inclusive, that acknowledged the place of pain and struggle and questioning in the forming of faith. Or worship song that came from the world church, from Africa, from freedom movements in the United States and South Africa, from India. It was glorious being able to sing so much all 60 or so of us, in unaccompanied four-part harmony. Unaccompanied four-part harmony. Perhaps it was the accessibility and sense of welcome and hospitality in and around both the historic Abbey and the McLeod Centre, which is where uh, Dale and I um, parked ourselves. We were welcome to sit in the choir stalls. Those with mobility or other issues were made welcome in worship. The worship was continually lay-led, apart from the sacraments. Even in communion on the final night was completely in the round. Perhaps it was the creativity and meaningfulness in some special times of worship. The Monday night's worship, which was provocatively called God and her girls, sorry if that offends some of you, in which brave women of faith through scripture and in our own lives were celebrated and through it all, God worshipped. Dale was able to assist as part of the leadership team for this. A beautiful use of candles and purposeful movement highlighted this for me, as well as some haunting music none more than a beautiful John Bell Alleluia, which he wrote for the Green Belt Festival in England uh, back in 2010. Perhaps it was the willingness to think outside the accepted and the, the traditional as we explored fresh insights into the use of prayer and scripture in worship. What are God's fresh ways for these times? Perhaps it was simply the ancient Celtic practice of the day beginning and ending with worship. Our morning worship following something akin to an ancient daily office format, but not including a final benediction or blessing. You see, the work of the day was ahead of us. Maybe it was vacuuming some floors cutting potatoes in the kitchen, cleaning the toilets. The work of the day ahead and our worship are all seen as one. We then brought all of that into our closing worship at the end of the day in the Abbey. I found that to have such a lovely rhythm about it. I value that so much, I still do. Friends, there really is a deep sense of spirituality about the Isle of Iona. 
you sense it so much. But it's not only confined to worship in the Abbey. It's not only confined to reflecting at the foot of the many ancient Celtic crosses spread across this small inner Hebridean island. Reverend George MacLeod, founder of the Iona community, famously described Iona as a thin place where heaven and earth come close. It is so true, as I shared last week. Perhaps it were the times of pilgrimage where either uh, with hiking boots on or more sedately by road, we would move around to different historic or spiritually significant points on parts of the island. We'd stop. We'd be led in reflection, scripture and prayer. And then perhaps as it was, as we left on a sunny Friday Scottish morning, the gift that these six days had been, sharing warts and all in community, folk from across so many countries. For us this week, Sweden, Germany, Uganda, New Zealand, Canada, the United States, Australia, and that's just a start. Half a world away on a remote Hebridean island off the west coast of Ireland, of Scotland, Ireland's further west. This was spiritually enriching in, in my walk, in our walk with Christ and God's world. It further broadened my appreciation for those times as community we worship, we witness, we serve, we are formed in faith and discipleship together. Amen. This is an Iona community song written out of the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I invite you to engage with this at a time in which the UK and so many other parts of Europe, the United States, here in our own country, I'm thinking of South Australia, Adelaide, are in lockdown or experiencing a second wave. This song is called We Will Wait. And when the song's over, some quiet music from the song will, will play and you're invited to bring your own prayers to God. We will wait. We will meet when the danger is over. We will meet when the sad days are done. We will meet sitting closely together and be glad our tomorrow has come. We will join to give thanks and sing gladly. We will join to break bread and share wine. And the peace that we pass to each other will be more than a casual song. So let's make with each other a promise that when all we've come through is behind, we will share what we missed and find meaning in the things that once troubled our minds. Until then, may we always discover faith and love to determine our way. That's our hope and God's will and our calling for our lives and for every new day.
It's always good to meet together for a midweek musing, any time in fact, but in this instance, midweek musing. It's great that we've been able to join together. We pray, I pray that the, the days ahead will be fruitful ones that you will know. God's presence, God's love. And if you're a disciple of Christ, his call on your life as precisely that, to be uh, the hands, the feet, the heart, the mind, the voice of Christ, with whom and with whom. I pray that you'll know what it means to be the heart, the hands, the feet, the mind, the voice of Christ, wherever and with whoever you might find yourself. We go with a final Iona community song called We Will Take What You Offer. We will live by your word. God bless. We will take what you offer.